there's this little flock of double ace barnavelda roosters that run kind of wild on our property and my sister and her fiance dubbed them all randy so yeah that they're, they're all named randy and so whenever they're being really loud we're always like randy <laughs> today is absolutely gorgeous you'll notice i'm wearing a tank top because it's 70 degrees out in january now less than a week ago it was 20 degrees um because you know we have like a weather roller coaster Days like today make me desperately want to just plant the whole garden. Of course, I know better because if we went from 20 to 70 in a week, we can go back to 20 in a week. So before we get too involved in today's projects here in the greenhouse, I wanted to make an announcement to you guys that I think is really cool. I have been honored hugely with a really neat opportunity. Uh, Justin Rhodes reached out to me a couple weeks ago and asked if I would be interested in putting some information in his private member group. And I thought that was really cool. Um, it's this group that he has called DIY Abundance where he's got, um, you know, how-to videos, instructional videos, additional information, content a private Facebook group, access to him, recipes, tool discounts, like it's a really cool resource. And I thought that that was just a neat thing to get to take part in. So I submitted a video to him. I will be uh, sending in one a little bit later as we get into the garden season. And I'm just personally looking forward to that resource. I know Justin was a huge inspiration to us as we were, you know, early on getting started in our homesteading adventures. So if you would like to uh, join us there, if you'd like to see my content that's going to be exclusively on that page or just join the community and get to have that uh, in-depth resource for growing food you can use my affiliate link down below which will get you access to that and with your membership but also support my channel so hot in my greenhouse right now which i'm not complaining I, you know here all last week i was like oh my gosh it's too cold it's too cold and now i'm like wow it's 95 degrees in here so i've got both the doors open because we have such up and down weather in arkansas i keep a close eye on my greenhouse especially when i start having a lot of established plants in here because one day where it gets to be 115 in here can just completely wipe them out we do have vents in the ceiling but usually i opt to just open the doors and make sure that i remember to come out and close them because a lot of times it's still getting really cool in the evenings a lot of my brassicas and flowers are up i've got some lettuce greens there and this is kale hey sweet kitten george would you come in to visit us now I've got a bunch of junk in here that all just got thrown in here. So today I'm looking at just kind of cleaning some of this out and I am going to start some seeds. I've got a project in mind that I've never really done before. I've never grown many dwarf tomatoes. Now usually I grow indeterminates which that's kind of like whenever you're just shopping for seeds in most seed catalogs. Mostly you're getting indeterminate tomatoes and that's the ones that just grow, grow, grow as long as you'll support them. Sometimes they're called pole tomatoes or climbing tomatoes, but indeterminates. You typically get more in a long season out of, oh, kitten George. Come on, come on. You need to close that. Okay. I've never had a long haired cat before. I think I'm gonna have to take him to get groomed he gets into everything like, that's a thing right like I don't know I just I feel like he's got a couple little knotted places and I don't want him to get in a bad way isn't he beautiful though the majestic kitten George so I've only ever really grown indeterminate tomatoes I've done a handful of dwarfs and really more just for the novelties the really like micro tomatoes now typically the benefit of an indeterminate tomato is that over the course of a long season you're going to get a larger harvest because they just keep producing. Whereas the benefit of determinate tomatoes or dwarf tomatoes is that um, a lot of times they produce sooner. So um, a lot of times northern growers like to go with dwarf tomatoes. Now I've never grown many dwarf tomatoes, just a handful of the little micro ones for the novelty of it. This year I've kind of just want to play with them. I, I want to try them. I'm not trying them very much. Don't fall in, Kitten George. I think you might be making a bad decision right now. So let's run inside and get the seeds. I was actually going to pot these inside earlier this week. We got sick 
and uh, now it's so nice. I don't want to be inside. I definitely want to be out here as long as I can. Tomato seeds. Dwarf tomato seeds. Other tomato seeds. Ridiculous amount of tomato seeds. Normally I don't start any seeds at all until February 15th. It's just my day to start seeds, which is about eight weeks before our last frost typically. I'm starting these dwarfs early. The problem with starting tomato seeds too early is that the plants will outgrow their containers and need to be potted up. So if you start them too early, you don't have enough space to pot everything up, it can make your plants real leggy and stuff. But these are gonna be good because my whole plan with them is to pot them up and grow them in containers. So I'm actually gonna start all these seeds in one of these trays um, with these little inserts, these bootstrap farmer things. The reason why I'm just doing one tray worth is because I have no idea what our weather's going to do and I might end up moving these back into the house. We are shoring up the greenhouse and making it a little more weather tight, but until then, I just wanna make sure that I can bring this in and put it under the grow lights that we are setting up today also. Jeremiah's working on that, we all see that later. I got a lot of these seeds from um, a swap that a friend of mine who is really into tomato breeding, she actually sponsored me in the swap, so I just got this wonderful surprise one day of just a lot of very rare seeds. It was a really awesome thing to get in the middle of the winter. And so I'm growing several of these for the first time ever. Oh, hello, Kitten George. Don't worry, I'm not doing anything here. Oh, you jerk. Kitten George is like, you don't want to see these tomato seeds get planted. You want to see me. <laughs> you got to get down, bro. It gets really windy up where we live because we live on a ridge. Hey, gee, come on, man. Okay. So yeah, I got all of these really wonderful seeds that I'm very pumped to try. And my my idea is that it would be really neat to make a little, and I know we're already building the window greenhouse and we are planning on doing that. It's gonna be great. Um, but I was thinking of making something a little more uh, temporary, not not with intentions to heat it or anything like that, that I could keep some dwarf tomato plants in a little early in the season and maybe get some early fruit off of them. I definitely wanna experiment with these and I'm sure I'll end up with some extras, but I'm sure it won't be hard to find people here in the area that want some dwarf tomato plants. Dwarfs are great for if you can only garden on like a patio um, because they're great for containers. They don't ever need more than you know, a five gallon bucket or a seven gallon grow bag, that would all, that would be very sufficient. And they don't need a lot of support. Whereas my indeterminate tomatoes, I make those really tall trellises for, and they often reach the top of them and go over them. Uh, these will do fine in grow bags with maybe like a stake down the middle. I just planted this whole tray. Each little six pack cell has a different variety in it. So did 12 different varieties. And then I'm going to do this, I, sh I told you about this the other day, but now I'm gonna show you since we're doing it. So this is just potting soil, and I've just taken the little end of this marker um, and tapped some holes down into the soil, pretty evenly spaced. They're not deep holes at all. They're just like, like this deep. I'm starting some of these mini bell tomatoes. They are dwarf varieties, um, and they only grow like 12 to 18 inches tall. They're not the tastiest tomatoes in the world, I'm just being honest. They're, they're, they're okay, like I mean, they just taste like a cherry tomato, just kind of plain. They're not like mind blowing or anything. However, they're really neat because you can grow them in like a gallon pot. And I'm going to start a whole lot of these here. And I'm just putting one seed in each one of these holes. And when these sprout and they get their first leaves, I'll separate them all out in two different little pots. The reason I'm planting so many of these is because this is one that I will definitely be taking to plant cells, and I'm hoping that they'll be a little more established by that time, because I think it'll just be a fun novelty for people, especially to buy for like children, to keep on the back porch. Now we wait. There's something about the first tomato seeds of the season that just really excites me. Ladies, what do you think of the weather? Relaxing. Don't mind me. Don't get up. Don't look at Chloe. 
sunbathing girlfriend you getting some of that vitamin d don't need these heat lamps anymore do we ness oh they're warm in here it's warm huh hey little girl hey baby ruth you'll see a little light spot here it's definitely lightening up and i think maybe her ears are going to end up having some light color around the edges and the little boy has got a little bit of a spot here himself so they're definitely pretty babies hey y'all aren't those babies so animated they're so cute i am going to get back to getting stuff done in just a second the mail ran and I noticed a couple of names on these labels and I thought it would be fun to open some of these things with you guys. I don't often do uh, like mail call videos because we just have so much going on that sometimes it's hard to get everything on videos. But these came from some really sweet people. So this is a package from my friend Haley. She has a company called Haley Rose Ceramics and she, uh, I've gotten several months from her. I love her work. She's an incredibly gifted potter. And she just sent me a surprise mug. Which I have no idea what's in this package. I'm assuming it's a mug because I love mugs, but I have no idea what it's gonna look like. Feels me. Oh, Maya! Oh my gosh! <laughs> Look! J and J for Jessica Jeremiah. Is that the cutest thing? <sighs> I love that. Do you know that she loves she knows that I love like big handled mugs because I like mugs that are comfortable to hold. That is absolutely adorable. It's like a tree with our initials carved into it. I love that. She actually also, I talked to her not that long ago about it because I'm constantly drinking out of her mugs in my videos and live chats and people, oh, look at the bottom. <laughs> I'm so tickled by this. But uh, I asked her to give me a coupon code for my viewers. So I'm gonna put, it, uh, I'm gonna put it in the information down below. It's Roots and Refuge and she's Haley Rose Ceramics. So I'll link her information so you can check her out. Ugh, that is so cute. That makes some tea now. Now, two more things I wanted to show you that came in the mail. You may know this if you follow me for very long, but I write for a magazine I have for five years. So if you so wanted to read some things that I have written, you could go read them till you couldn't possibly want to read anymore because there's a lot of them, but this just came in the mail um, and this is the article that I wrote this month and it's called The Season of Hushed Expectation and funnily enough that this came in the mail today um, I'm talking about anticipating February 15th is whenever I start all of my garden seeds and it's funny that we kind of did like a little one tray of garden seeds today but if you guys want to read this article I always have Do South Magazine uh, linked in the information below and it'll be there again today. Now this package, not sure what's in here. I mean, again, I can make an assumption because it is from my friends over at MI Gardener. Uh, Luke and Cindy are awesome. And she actually messaged me a little while ago and was like, hey, can I get your address? So let's check out what they sent. They're so sweet. Oh, oh gosh, throwing stuff everywhere. So there's their card. Um, and my gardener is a really awesome place to get seeds and so many people tell me oh I wish that I could afford to go seed shopping but I can't spend you know hundreds of dollars on seeds their packs of seeds are 99 cents and they're not like measly little packs they're full-size packs they sent me these gorgeous seed saving envelopes that's really cool and this is really neat because these actually have the adhesive a lot of times you get the envelopes and they don't have the adhesive so that's cool and Okay, so they just came out with this thing. I've been really good about not buying a bunch of seeds this year, and uh, they came out with this, and I was so tempted. That was so sweet of them to send this to me. It's their new Homestead collection. Look at that. The artwork on these is absolutely gorgeous. Look at this. And it's just an entire collection. Um, but you can buy individual varieties of all kinds of varieties for 99 cents, and then they just came out with this Homestead collection. I don't know what the packs end up being, but it's 
an entire collection. Wisconsin pickling cucumber. I'm excited about that. That's one I've never grown before. Danvers carrots, kidney beans. I hope it's not tedious for me to show you every single one of these because you know I'm about to. They're just too pretty. Ace 55, Waltham butternut, Copenhagen market cabbage. I'm sure Luke curated this collection and so I'm sure every single one of these varieties is wonderful. California Wonder Bell, that's one of my favorites. Golden Bantam Corn, that's a really good one. Utah Sweet Spanish Onion. Yellow Eye Beans, that, that's a cool one. I'm definitely gonna put that in the garden. And Bush Acorn Squash, that's a great one. That is so awesome. Thank you Haley and to the Marians for sending that. That kind of stuff just blesses my heart so much. Together, this is like, for me, the making of the perfect afternoon. <laughs> like, tea and seeds, yes please. Any day, every day. Thank you. <laughs> I do have to get to work though, so I am going to part ways with you guys now. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I, I love the fact that I got to share with you my first little seed starting venture of the year. And of course, I am still anticipating February 15th, which is my little personal day to to start the garden. That, that in my mind is when it, when it starts. I will be direct sowing some stuff, starting some seeds. So thank you guys. I bless you. Until next time.